What's up, people? Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Somebody asked me to do this video by Dan Locke, Sell Me This Pen. I've actually watched the first few minutes of this video before, and I, I, I vaguely remember it being really fucking stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I have changed and matured since then, so um, maybe I'll think it's like better and interesting, but the vibe that I got from this guy is like, I don't want to say fake guru, but like basically like trying to be a guru. Obviously, he's doing pretty well. But like, I'm a guru, you know, but listen to me, let's make money together, kind of stuff like that. So um, how to sell anything to anyone, anytime, that's not possible, but okay. Um, yeah, not looking good, Danny boy, but let's watch it anyway. Go ahead, sell me this pen. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to sell anything to anyone, anytime. Now, when it comes to selling, when it comes to closing, there's so many techniques and so many ways. Today I'm gonna to share with you three powerful secrets that you can use to sell anything to anyone. The very first secret is this. How do you turn something that's a commodity? How do you sell a product? How do you sell a service in such a noisy marketplace? Number one, understand this. People don't buy because of logic. People buy because of emotion and they justify it with logic. People buy based on emotions and they justify it with logic. I want you to think of something that you want to buy in your life. It could be a car, it could be a house, it could be anything. Just want you to picture that. Once you have that in your mind, I want you to ask yourself this question. Why do you want to buy it? Why do you want to buy that particular item? Why do you want to own that item? Why is that? Maybe it's, it's, maybe it's a new suit, it looks good on you. Maybe it's a new dress, maybe it's a new car, maybe it's a new house, maybe it's a vacation. But why do you buy it? I want you to dig a little bit deeper. If you peer through the layers, I think you'll realize you're buying emotions. Maybe you buy the item because of greed. You wanna make money or you wanna save money? Or maybe it's because of generosity, that by buying this item, it's gonna help other people. Have you noticed sometimes, even the companies out there, if you buy this particular product, they're gonna donate a certain amount to charities? Maybe you buy it because of generosity. Maybe because... Um, yeah, so like, you know, I mean, I, I've... So I, I worked in sales for a long time and I read all the fucking sales books and I watched all the fucking videos and I listened to all the fucking, there were tapes, not even tapes anymore and other like tapes that have turned into MP3s, but like, yeah, people buy in emotions and then they justify it with logic. That's, or like something along those lines. Other people say like 80% of the decision is made um, with emotion, and, but you still need like a little bit of logic for them to be able to justify it before making the purchase, not just backwards rationalize after they made the purchase. Um, sell anything to anyone. Okay, so so basically the like my strategy. I'll tell you my strategy when I sell. Okay, Th this is this is how I do it, and this is not like th there's like you said there's a million ways to do it, and this is not the only way. It's it's my way. Which I, once you guys hear it, if you've watched any of the videos that I've made about health, basically, like you'll you'll see that it's very reminiscent of that, because it requires not a lot of thinking and effort on my part. Okay, so basically what I do is I look for people who are already interested <laughs> in what I'm selling <laughs> and I filter for those people, right? I don't like, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to give anybody who's like, say I'm trying to sell fucking this, whatever. I'm trying to sell this dental floss, this pen, pretend a pen, I don't have a pen, whatever. I'm trying to sell this, this pen, okay? I'm not going to like go up to every single person and be like, this is a good pen. It's an amazing pen you need it because of greed or emotions. Be emotional about my pen, it's blah, blah, blah. Um, no, I, I'm not, uh, no, I, that's, that's, a, that's in my opinion, that's a, like a, I don't wanna say a beginner mistake, but that's how a lot of beginners to sales think it works. That you take somebody who's not interested at all and you, you convince them. Which, to be fair, there, there is an element of that. There are some people who do not know about your product or service, and when you tell them about it, that might make them want it a little bit, but you're, you can't, like you're not gonna take somebody who doesn't want it and gonna sell it to them by making them emotional about it. I mean, maybe, it's possible. You know, I definitely know some good salespeople who sold shit to people that didn't want it, for sure. Um, I just don't know how to do it that way, in my opinion. Anyway, the way that I would do it is I would just look for people who already are clearly interested and then just talk to them about it and make it easier for them to buy by um, giving them a deal. 
that's like actually all I did was like when I would sell hair straighteners, I'd be like, this is, this is what I'm selling you. Show them the demo. I see they like it. I'm like, look, if you want to buy this, if you buy this one, I'll give you this for free. Do you want it? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. What color do you want? That's it. So simple. You know what I mean? No, like emotions necessary. It's a shame that if I don't buy this, I'll look foolish. If I don't own this, I'll look foolish. Or maybe it's fear that if I don't buy this, I'm going to be missing out. I don't want to miss out. Maybe it's an escape. Then you go on the vacation, your 95 job is driving you fucking crazy, and you say, oh man, I need, I need some time off. Maybe doing it, buying it because escape. Whatever those reasons are, those are very often emotional reasons. So you buy because of emotion, and you justify it with logic. So think about when you're selling something to somebody. Are you just talking about features and benefits? What this thing will do for you? Or are you pushing those emotional hot buttons? I remember one time I was in Harry Rosen, which is a very well-known kind of men's, uh, menswear store, high-end in Vancouver. I walk into the store and I was walking by the Tom Ford section. And the salesman approached me and said, Sir, what, is there anything I can help you with? I said, No, I'm just browsing around. And he said, Do me a favor. Put this suit on. Now, at the time, I've never owned a Tom Ford suit before. I have a lot of suits, but I don't have a Tom Ford suit. He said, Do me a favor. Put this on. I said, All right. I put it on. He said, How do you feel? Well, it feels pretty good. I said, okay, also try this on. Put on this tuxedo. I said, Okay, that's pretty cool. He said, Oh, it looks great. He said, I said, sir, are you, are you a fan of James Bond? I said, like, who isn't a fan of James Bond? Like, duh. He said, you see this suit right here, this tuxedo, this exact suit, exact same design as he, James Bond wears in Casino Royale. You know the scene when he was gambling? I said, fuck, it looks good, right? And before you know it, I bought the damn fucking, fucking tuxedo, right? And it's a lot of money, it costs a lot of money. And if you think about that, what am I buying? I'm buying emotions. What I'm buying is this, I'm buying when I wear this tuxedo, I mean, I feel good. As a James Bond fan, I feel like James Bond. Even logically, I know this, of course, it's not James Bond, I'm not James Bond, but emotionally, it takes me there. This is cool that I own, you know, with the same tuxedo, the same fit, right? The same everything. And then he upsold me on the damn, like the, the shirt and the cuffling, the whole nine yard, right? That's what I'm talking about. People buy because emotion. Okay, so that's actually, that's very interesting. Um, when it, so like when it comes to sales, like, all right, maybe, maybe I made my process seem like a little, a little too simplified, right? There, there are a lot of, um, so basically in sales, like one thing that you'll hear thrown around a lot is that 10% of people will buy from you no matter what, 10% of people won't buy from you no matter what. And the, like the art of sales is, is getting the 80% in between, if that makes sense. So you do, there, there are a lot of like little tricks like that, like the do me a favor, try on the suit, blah, blah, blah. Like the, the phrase do me a favor it has nothing to do with like that's something that you say to like somebody, you know, to like close the window or something, right? But when we hear do me a favor, it's like, okay, we just naturally think like, all right, do me a favor. Another one that I like to use, and there's, there's a ton of these, right? Th this guy seems like he knows how to sell. He's obviously doing very well. So I'm sure he's got a lot of good tips. Maybe it was a little unfair on him before when I watched this video. But anyway, um, really quick, just another one that I like is excuse me, right? Excuse me is very good at like cutting through whatever somebody is doing or saying or thinking to get their attention, right? You hear, excuse me, people will like naturally turn and like you have their attention immediately. Okay. What you say after that is, you know, it's, that's just the first step, but, but that's a, a good tip. Just maybe think of that, I guess. Emotions and they justify with logic. You have to understand that. Don't push your products. Don't just push your services. Don't push the features and benefits. Think about what are those emotional hot buttons that you're pushing. Number two, people don't buy their way into something. They buy their way out of something. It means people very often they buy something because they have a problem they want solved. They want to buy their way out of that problem. People don't buy the drill, they want to hold on the wall. So what is it that you are you're helping them solve that what problem? What is it? What is that thing? You have to understand. So I always say the amount of money that you make is in direct proportion to how how deep you understand your marketplace's pain. The amount of money you make is in direct proportion of how well, how deep you go, how much you understand your marketplace's pain. So you have to understand what it is, what, what, what are the pains that people have and how can you help them relieve some of that pain? So think about that. Number. That's very interesting. I never, I mean, that's, I guess, a concept I'm, I'm familiar with, but I've never heard it phrased like that. You, know, you don't buy your way into something, you buy your way out of something. And that's very, when I thought of that, I thought of how like, you know, as, as human beings, we'll try to avoid the fear of loss. That's like pretty much the most powerful motivator that we have. It's not that you, you know, if we all, if we all pursued the, what we wanted or what was good for us, we'd all be billionaires with six packs. That's like the joke. Right. Um, but instead, you know, we're obviously not, um, I guess maybe when, when I, what I said earlier in the video about my, my quote unquote easy strategy, 
I think that might be a little bit biased as far as how I was getting my customers when I used to work at the mall because I was essentially just stopping people who walked by, right? Who, who like these people weren't like lining up to look, you know what I mean? Once a day, maybe somebody would like stop and look. It doesn't happen a lot. You have to actually stop them. You don't know anything about them. You don't know, you know, I was selling hair products. Like you don't know what their problems with their hair are if, or if they even have any, if they even care about it. Obviously, over time, like, you know what to look for are girls who, like, have their hair tied up, um, you know, will have different, uh, you know, biases, let's say, or different attitudes about their hair as opposed to girls who have, like, naturally curly hair, girls who have that, like, really, like, super curly hair, girls who have dead straight hair, girls who have fine hair, whatever. So I guess you do have to know your market pace and know what their specific pains might be. Um, but that that implies that there is a pain, right? There has to be a pain there in the first place. It's not something that like you can manufacture on the spot. Like when I used to sell skincare, when I first started out, I was, I was very good at selling skincare. And then like I, I lost the magic at some point and just everything fell apart. But when I started out, I was very good because what I would do is I would sit people in the chair. And this is actually, interestingly enough, after I listened to a Tony Robbins um, sales course where he said actually the same thing. He's like, people, they want to solve their problems. We'll solve a problem for them um, and you can sell them anything, right? So I would ask, I would sit people in a chair and I would say, look, I'd hold up a mirror to their face and I would say, if I could solve one problem that you have with the skin on your face, what would it be? And you know, everyone's got something like these wrinkles on my eyes, these blackheads, fucking whatever, like everyone's got something. And then based on what they said, I would show them a product. I, you know, I had fucking 30 products to sell. Um, I'd show them something. If they like it, they would buy it. I did really well in the beginning. Some For some reason, I, I stopped doing that later on and I things didn't go well after that. But it's a good point. It's a good point. You gotta find the pain. Number three, people don't buy products and services, they buy stories. Because when there are so many choices out in the marketplace, on the internet, any, any, any product that you want, there are hundreds and hundreds of choices. How do you stand out? How do you add emotions to a commodity, a pen? What's the difference between a $2 pen like this or a, an $800 Mont Blanc John F. Kennedy limited edition exclusive pen, $800 pen. It's the same pen, it's the same functions. Story. When you add story to, it, to an item, suddenly when you add the, the, the John F. Kennedy, the president's story attached to a brand or logo, it is 10 times more valuable. It is 100 times more valuable. It is 300 times more valuable than a particular pen. All because of story. You write the same. A $2 pen you can write too. That's the difference. So think about what, what's the story. How can you inject stories into everything that you do? Maybe it's an origin story. How did you get started? Why do you do what you do? What about also stories of your customers? I just launched a new YouTube channel. You can click the link below. I'll put a link below in the description. You can check it out. It's a Dan Lok Global Community on YouTube. It has nothing to do with the program that I teach. It has everything to do with stories. With stories from my students. What they have learned, their background, their stories. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with, with the program that I run. It has nothing to do with that but stories. It's other people's stories. Other people's success stories. So where are you using stories in your marketing, in your business? How else can you use stories? Remember, facts tell, stories sell. Facts tell, stories sell. So comment below, tell me, based on these three secrets, how will you sell me this pen? Oh, that's pretty good. All right, I, I might have judged this guy. You know, honestly, maybe I was just like in a bad mood when I watched the video before, but I was like, oh God, who is this guy? Um, interesting, interesting. Uh, actually, you know, I think what it might be is that now, now that I, like when I do these review videos, I, I take actually like a critical look at them as opposed to if if you out there or when you watch a YouTube video, you probably just like, it's just kind of like on in the background. You're not like watching it and analyzing it and like thinking of something to say and if you agree or not, which is, which is what I do when I watch it. Um, regarding what he said about facts tell, stories sell, that's, that's very catchy. Um, and I, I guess that's true. I'm just trying to think in my own experience how that might be the case. Um, when I used to work on kiosks, there's a phrase in Hebrew where they would say like, the customer isn't buying the product, they're buying chavayat knia, which in Hebrew means like the experience of buying, I guess, or the chavaya is not really experience. It's like just, it's the it's the experience of buying, I guess, which, which really means... Um, not experience, but like the, like a chavaya is like an experience, but like an experience, like a rite of passage almost, right? So it's more like that. So it's like the rite of passage of buying, but a rite of passage in terms, in this case is more like a passive rite of passage, if that makes sense, where like 
you're being you're being taken along a path as opposed to a normal rite of passage, which is where you like actually doing things, right? Um, but the I, I would often say like, okay, so when when I would sell products on the kiosk, I I knew it was strange to me in the beginning, but later on I I realized that a lot of these people they were buying the product and they would never use it. Strangely, it was rare. Probably like honestly, if one out of a hundred of these people actually used the product after buying it, it would be I, I that would be a lot to me. That'd be surprising. Um, most of the time, what they would do is they would buy it and they'd go home, they'd throw it in their closet, and they'd never use it. Why? I, I I had no idea, but I think what it actually was, kind of similar to what he said, is that they just enjoyed the experience with me so much, because after you do it for a long time, you dial in your jokes and you know, you know when to pressure, you know when to back off, you know when to like, you know who to tell what joke to to get them loosened up. Uh, you know how to make people have fun. You know how to like manage a group, right? You know if it's if there's the dad, the mom, the brother, and the sister, and you're doing the demo on on the sister, the daughter. You know how to act one way. You know what to say to the dad. You know what to say to the mom. You know what jokes to make. You know if the dad starts to look bored. You know you know what to say to him to get him more engaged. Like all these like tiny little things that you know what to do so that when they go home. It's not just them like, okay, I went to Walgreens, I bought a fucking hair straightener for $25. It's we went to the mall, this guy wearing like a bright green shirt stopped us and he made some curls in my hair and he like, you know, flirted with my mom in front of my dad and he made my dad touch my hair a little bit and like my brother like did the demo on me a little and like, you know, all this like crazy shit, which actually is is a story. That's That's what they're buying is that at the end of that, um, entire journey, I guess they they feel that they've gotten their money's worth, and they'll essentially pay you for the experience. Kind of strange. It's maybe unique to to retail. I don't I don't know I don't know how that translates to like selling online or business to business. A little bit different. Um, I just have I have less experience with that overall. Bulk of my sales experience is in retail. Anyway, interesting video. I was I was not prepared to like this video at all, but homie seems like he's doing very well. Chinese people in general, man, they are like with when it comes to business and making money, they are very they they know what they're doing. They're ruthless and toothless. Okay, so thank you for telling me to do that video. If you guys have any other suggestions for videos or YouTubers, let me know. Leave me a comment. Peace.